Hello everybody, and welcome back to Skyblock Survival. I've done a couple things since last episode, like built this giant square ring around the center, which I'll be using to branch things off from it, like these things I've already done. I've also slaughtered all the chickens. The reason for this is I'm still trying to get peaceful mobs to spawn here. I can't do that if I have a hundred chickens cooped up in a little pen because they exceed the mob cap for peaceful mobs, which pretty much means if you have too many of them, then nothing more will spawn. So I killed them all and replaced it with a chest full of eggs. Um, that's all I've done since last episode. But this episode, I do have a huge project I want to work on, which I won't tell you what it is till the time comes. But, it will require a lot of resources, like redstone, and slime balls, and nether quartz. Oh, hmm, might have to work around that a little bit. But I'll tell you a few notes about the witch hut and slime farm thing, about what I did to make them work. Now, they're mostly just temporary structures. And I'd like to make a lot more efficient one in the future. But what this is, is this is the actual location of a witch hut. If you recreate the world in the seed, you would see a witch hut right here. Just like I did in the nether farm. Um, so what happens is witches will spawn on this platform, and there's a spawn platform below this. And then there's trapdoors all around, and so they just walk off and fall to their doom on that platform down there. Maybe I can get to this platform also. Yeah. And it's that simple. Yeah, here we go. Which is now spawning. So over there is the path to the witch hut. It goes all the way over there and then takes a turn and ends up over there. Down here is where I get my slime balls. This is... I'm kind of copying off a design I've seen on the Zipcrowd server where you could pour water to turn off the thing. This is a slime chunk. So slimes will spawn any light level below level 40, I think. So all, so it's hard to deactivate because you can't just use lights. So I'm doing... So all I have to do is break this block, and water will pour down and cover the whole thing. Now, if you look, it's all made out of cobblestone, that means it's temporary. I'll probably build something better. I haven't really thought about what I really want to do for slime farm. But I just want to get something going. Uh-oh. Looks like they can escape. Now to turn it off, come over here, break this block, and voila. Well, that's great and all, but how do you find the slime chunks? I used a program called Amidst, I think that's how you pronounce it, and I actually love this thing. It You put in your seed, and then it tells you all your biome information and stuff like that, and these purple squares are all slime chunks. I There's a menu that enables them. So look for that. And it also tells you other great things like... Ooh, I think that was the witch hut I found. And these the different biomes as you hover. It says up there, extreme hills, forest. That's the original world spawn. It was moved to zero zero, which is around here, I think. Which is mostly surrounded by extreme hills. And, oh, well, this is the biome information on my map of Skyblock, just in case you're wondering. Um, I was curious to see if there was a, a mushroom, mushroom biome nearby. The nearest one I could find was that one, way over there. Also, a note with the slime farm, make sure you get the coordinates right when you're building in a slime chunk. Some chunks are slime chunks, some chunks are not. I found slime chunk, and I got the corners for it all, and then 
I came over here and I built it. And then it didn't work. I thought maybe I had it too high, so I rebuilt it all one block lower. Then I found out, whoops, I got the X and the Z corns mixed around. It's actually supposed to be over there. Oopsies. And so I tore it all apart and rebuilt it over here. So be careful with your coordinates and don't mess up like I am do. Between the time it took to build the witch hut and stuff, slime thing, I've built an extra arm coming out of this. And this is for decorative little things I want to build. And I started building one over here. This was going to be for a Christmas special. But uh, I was going to record myself multiple times playing these different notebooks. You'll never guess what song. But I actually tested it out and found out it sounded awful. So, I'm going to trash that idea. Maybe I'll come back to it someday. Most likely not. And here's the Christmas tree. I did have to craft shears to make it, unfortunately. And then I got lots of little presents and stuff. And something I want to do for a finale for the song, which I haven't actually tried yet, but might as well. Oops! <laughs> Oops. Well... That's my Christmas tree. Alright, got my stuff together again. And there's one more thing I wish to show you. And that is, I have rebuilt this cobblestone farm. Not this one, but I built a new one. This one, it was great. I got tons of it from it and I loved it. But I decided I wanted to try an AFK one. So, I went back to the first design ever anyone ever built in Skyblock most simplest one and I have built that here after the first episode where I built this giant thing yeah and I am actually loving this when I AFK with this thing I can get so much and I have this dispenser dropper here that automatically gives me pickaxes I'll show you that device in a second and so that just lets me mine for a long time sometimes it doesn't give me a pickaxe I'm not sure why because it's not like I'm constantly monitoring yet but for the most part, I'll always get a pickaxe from it. And I can mine snacks. I probably mine a couple double chests with this thing. And I've been loving it. I'm the other one's still functional. I split the lava to go the two different directions, one here and one this way, in case I ever still want to use this. But I don't think I will be, because I've been getting so much from this thing. And it is great. So now to talk about this little device here. To use it, I just need to throw something on that pressure plate. Oh, actually first I gotta fill up my inventory. And then I'll drop a... As soon as I pick up the item again, it'll drop a pickaxe there, which will then sit on the pressure plate until I pick it up by breaking up that pickaxe. And then once I do, it'll drop another one. If I want to turn off this machine, I just clear this cobblestone and pick up two in a row and it's off. But it's really easy to build. I'll show you it right now. It requires one piece of redstone. That's it. Here's my cobble. And there it is. Just break this. The dropper throws a pickaxe on there. Turns off the rest of the torch so it doesn't drop anything else. And then when you want it to drop something else, as soon as you pick that up, it'll turn it back on and and let's cycle. And this brings me to my next thing. Bam! That thing. I have been working on this for a little while now. So you guys may recognize this. If you don't, this is the Iron Foundry. Tango Tick designed this, and it is awesome. It, I did a little math, and it'll give you a piece of iron once every two seconds. in it's full form. Don't worry, I haven't finished it yet. In fact, the only thing I've done was build pretty much the ground and the ceiling. Let me just quickly get up there and show you guys what it looks like. And here we are. Now, I don't know how many of you guys are too familiar with this or built this or anything, but you can, you'll can you probably know that it calls for a few things I don't have, like glass along this. No, not here, up here. And I don't have glass, but 
Carpet will work just as well. I did a little testing with that. So I'm using carpet held by torches everywhere. Uh, you'll also probably know if you've ever looked at that video, doors don't belong down here. Why do I have these here? I actually used to have more doors, but I transported them over there. I'll show you in this later. These doors, what I'm actually doing is the iron foundry actually requires iron to build it. So I need iron from somewhere and not from zombies. That takes forever. I had one piece of iron left. So I turned this into a villager, a iron golem farm pretty much, in the most basic form. I brought two villagers up here, which I'm going to be doing again on camera, and trapped them in a little pan, had enough doors and villagers there that they just made iron golems, and then to make them not mad at me when I killed them, I crafted a piston with my last piece of iron and suffocated that iron golems by pushing a cobblestone into its head. And I got 17 iron out of that. Now, why did I remove the villagers? Well, I didn't really purposely do that. A zombie got to them. So, I gotta be more careful making sure this place is spawn proof. And so, I'm gonna have to bring more up to them. Which I'll be doing right now. Because luckily, I decided not to bring them all up, but to leave a couple behind. So, I had those guys breeding, and I've got three more extra villagers, and hopefully I can bring them up. Last time I brought them up, a bunch of them committed suicide, so hopefully that doesn't happen. Now, I'm not going to be using water streams or minecarts, definitely not minecarts. I have kind of come up with uh, my own way of doing this. Here's my couple villagers. I actually have one trapped over there, which I was going to bring up, but I guess not. And this is going to be pretty much moving the center of the village around. So right now all these doors are village doors, and which I had these all here so that they could breed. But now I'm going to remove them all, but I'll keep one. And what that'll do is that'll make that single door the center of the village. And this works better at night when they actually want to run into the houses. But this is what I got. So there's the last door. Now there's no door, no doors in this village, which means there's no houses. So all I have to do now is make maybe a house over here, and then voila, they should slowly but surely wander over to that house since it's the center of the village. Oh, look at that! Already happening. At least it's the little guy. Oh, oh! See what I mean about trying to commit suicide? Now that they're here. I'll just put another door farther, farther down, like over here. And then the center of the village will be between the two doors, and then once I break this, that's the village. Alright, I got them next to the ladder, and I can't do the door trick here anymore since I'm under the iron foundry and I can't make a valid village door without sky axis. So I just block this off, they don't really resist pushing when there's no village around either. So. I can just bring them up to this ladder. I put this tubing around there for a reason, and that is so that I can just push them up the ladder. So much easier than water streams. Though so I do need a bucket of water for this. And here we go. I'll make them swim up to the ladder. And we got it. Oh, we don't have. Whoa. Oh, there we go. We got it. Alright. And I can go up at full speed now. And there's no trouble here. And boom, we got a villager. Alright, so the next step here is to actually work on the thing that keeps these chunks always loaded, even when I'm in the nether and stuff. And that's not easy. This is the part that requires nether quartz. So, I have been playing around in creative and trying to find an alternative to these three devices. And I have come up with one. And I will be doing that. But first, I need another nether portal. Which means I need a diamond pickaxe. Which means I need one of these villagers to give me a diamond pickaxe. And maybe him, if I trade with him a little while. Or maybe I should keep him separated or something. Oh, but I need another villager to give me emeralds for something. So, 
I'll be doing some trading with them and seeing what I can get. Turns out it's harder to get a diamond pickaxe than I thought, so I'm still working on that, but in the meantime, I thought I'll get to work on a couple other things. That pretty much everything else that doesn't need the diamond pickaxe. So over here, I started working on what I want to be where I store all the iron ingots. This I will put trap chests here in the middle, but I don't have any iron. Or very little. I've been getting some iron golems spawning up there. So until then, it'll just be like this, and it'll remain unfinished. There'll also be some redstone in the back, but since it's not too required, I won't put that there. That's what this button's going to be for. Um, basically, I got this idea off the Zipcrowd Servitor number 10, I think, with the giant tree farm for the 2x2 two two trees. They At the end, they showed their gold farm. They put a bunch of chests there, that, and you just break them all, collect all the iron, and while you're collecting it, you can quickly craft it, and then put it into a chest. So that's the idea behind here. There'll be nine chests, and you craft all those ingots into a double chest of iron blocks, which will then be transported to the other side, which will have chests containing iron blocks. The button, what's going to happen is it's going to turn on the light, and then when you click it, it'll turn on the other light, and every time you click it, it just alternates back and forth. And whichever light's on, that's where the iron will be going to first. And then it'll overflow into the other side is the idea. Which is not set up at all, because I don't have any hoppers or anything. <laughs> but that'll be the last thing I actually build, is that kind of stuff. But here's the storage system. The reason why I want to have the iron alternating back and forth, so that I can... Well, basically, when this section fills up, then it'll start filling up that section... And then when I turn them all into iron blocks, I want to take all the leftover iron here and turn those into iron blocks as soon as that's able to fill up. And, well, I can't wait for this to fill up again and then fill all that up to the top. Because if that gets filled at the top, then all the rest of the iron is just going to fall in the void. So I want to be able to alternate it back and forth to be able to turn all the iron into blocks and stuff. And that's that. guess I'll work on the next part. And I made the crusher system. I am using a crusher system instead of lava because I still want lava over there and it would be hard to try to get the lava to split between the two devices. So I'm going to just crush all the iron golems to death. This is how it works though. So this 3x3 tube will continue up to the very top of this when it's done. Basically the iron golems will spawn up there, fall down the tube, and into this place the water current is just here to send them into this 2 by 3 gap, which they will then stand on these three blocks here, hit the tripwire, which opens it, let them fall over, and then the blocks will come back and crush their hits. It's designed so that if one iron golem's already being crushed at that time, then another one could still come in and stop the crushing for a split second while he falls down. And then this water current at the bottom is just to get all the items to fall right here, which I will worry about what to do with them later. I do actually have an iron golem up there, ready to die by this crusher system. I have never tested it yet, so I better do that. Alright, here's our chance. Oh! Oh, you missed. Oh, yeah, there we go, there we go. Oh, yeah! Yeah, this is in the way. There we go. Oh, and he's dead. And there's the items. Works like a charm. Got five iron, nice. Let me just show you the redstone. Very simple. So the trip wire hook is connected to this block, which also has the redstone torch. So if an item triggers that, then the redstone torch will turn off until the iron golem is out of that. Which will then turn off this redstone. And under this redstone, we have the three sticky pistons. So while this, which I guess is pretty self-extract, or while this is being tricky, triggered, the sticky pistons will go back, and then 
Yep. All right. I have gotten a lot of work done. And I will be spending this next amount of time explaining how all these different things work. I had to build it all together instead of in different sections like I was doing before. Because none of it really works without the other components. So there will be a lot to go through. And it could be really boring. So if you wish to skip this, go ahead and click the annotation in the top right corner. Or the link in the video description. That will be up there for the whole duration of this explanation. So if you ever get bored, go ahead and click on it. And I guess we'll jump right in. So this is the killing chamber that we talked about before. All the ions will flow down here and into this hole. Later I'll put iron bars there to keep you from actually falling in there, but the ions will still be able to fall down. Then they'll proceed down this water channel, and then into this water channel, which will align them against this wall. And this is where the sorting magic actually happens. So let me just grab a few of these poppies. Now, I don't have enough poppies in the system right now for it to be working fully. So, just know that. But anyways, let me just toss the poppy there. And toss a piece of cobblestone in. And the poppy will get stuck in that stack. And the cobblestone will flow right by and into this hopper. Oops, click to the poppies. And then into this chest. And later I will we'll reroute that to the storage place over there. But for now that's where it's at. Now the poppies will change out every once in a while and so fresh ones can come in so they don't despawn. And that's what a lot of this stuff down here does. It also has a dual purpose to do something else though. But anyways, to, what happens is there'll be poppies up here waiting to drop down. And there'll also be poppies of course on there. And both trapdoors will open simultaneously from this red stone wire here. And the repeater there will also power that wrestle wire, which will lead to this bottom trap door. And that there is a pulp shortener, which, so as soon as this line gets powered, then you got four ticks for the trap doors to be open, and then they'll close again after that. So that's that. I guess I'll follow the route of the poppies and show you what everything does, and then I'll go and explain the wrestle behind it all. So keep in mind that that's where that is. Oh, no! I'll fix that later. Okay, anyways, when the trapdoor is open, the pops will go down here and into this hopper, which will then lead to a dropper. I'll just jump down here and show you. There's a dropper right there. And so that's where that all leads to. This is an item elevator. And so. Basically, the dropper, that clicking sound you hear is the dropper firing. It'll fire 20 times every 40 seconds. Ooh, how does that happen? Sometimes this thing scares me. Anyways, normally when this thing runs for a little bit, this drop hopper will always be full, except after the times that it spits out the poppies and needs a little bit of refilling. And since there's always more poppies coming into the system, this dropper, this hopper fills up quickly, and then the puppies will move on down here and to the next hopper, which will also soon fill up. And this hopper leads to this dropper, which leads to this awesome nether portal that will actually be made out of obsidian once I find a diamond pickaxe. Still working on that. And this is what will throw the puppy into the nether to keep the system loaded always. So that gets thrown in there about once every 2 minutes and 40 seconds. And that is everything to do with the path of the puppies. So I guess now let's talk about this crazy redstone circuitry you see before you. Now this is probably very inefficient. I don't know how you make a minute long or two minute long. Well I guess at the, so at the end of this it's actually 2 minute 40 timer thing. And this is the best I can come up with. Ooh, you know what? I keep doing that on camera. Maybe I shouldn't record so much. Hang on, I'll be back with you in a moment. Alright, I'm recovered. And this section is actually pretty dangerous for jumping around, but you kind of have to to get around. So I guess I'll start over here. 
this is a simple clock, and I've been doing a lot of math in this thing, but this will turn on about once every once every one and one fifth seconds. This here is a pulse shortener. Every time you see a piston thing like this, that's a pulse shortener. And it goes to this one tech repeater, which then pretty much toggles this block out and and get off this. And so you can see that. And every time that block goes out, it'll power that redstone dust, which pretty much does the same thing over there. You see this block goes out and in, but does that half as long. And every one of these lines pretty much cuts in half how long that length is. So by the time we get to this very end, this is going to be a 2 minute and 40 seconds every time the block goes on top of that. Powers this redstone line and spits it poppy into the nether. There's another section right here. This block, whoop, this block is powered once every 40 seconds. And this triggers pretty much all the fancy poppy stuff, which I will now show you. So, when that block goes over here, as you just witnessed, the redstone dust gets powered, and it will power this repeater line and this piston here. And when that gets powered, it creates this one tick pulse. Doesn't have to be, but that's just what I chose. Powers this redstone dust, and then powers this piston, which moves the block on top of there, and powers that redstone dust. Now, after this repeater line goes around and comes back, then it will power this piece of resin dust, which makes this piston power and push the block back over. So you, you hear that that clicking sound happens until that block gets pushed back over. And so that's pretty much what happens when that resin dust gets powered. There's a couple other signals that get taken off from here, and that is this repeater right here. When that resin dust gets powered, not only does the piston fire, but so is this repeater. And I'll explain it later, but this repeater pretty much is a direct power line to that piston there, and that piston is what pushes the items up the elevator. And I'll go into depth when I actually go into the whole system over there. And then there's also this resin torch here. It's a uh, inverse signal, which means this resin torch powers about 20 seconds after this block will get powered, as in the signal up there will turn on pretty much whenever the wrong signal's off. Pretty much what inverting a signal does. So, let's see if I can get up there. Basically, I don't, I needed a bit of delay between this timer and this redstone line here, and I don't want to bother putting a bunch of repeaters now, so I just inverted the signal. This goes over here to the redstone bus that broke, and then just powers the two trap doors. So that's how the trap doors get powered. So first, the dropper things. Ooh, you see that? Go over there. Obviously, I'm not doing my lighting good. I'm gonna have to go to my furnaces after this and check that out. But anyways, that delay is really just to how the poppies. This is the top of the item elevator, just to have them travel over and on top of this trap door here. Okay, now to get to the actual item elevator. Now, what it is, I can't actually really show you inside of it, because it's all covered in snow, because I don't have glass. But the dropper is right there, and that will click about 20 times. This redstone line will flash about 20 times, puts about 20 items over there. Once every 40 seconds, that will happen. And then, at the end of the 20 clicks, it's happening right now, the piston will go up. Whoop, there it happened, and when that happens, the items will be forced up to the top of the item elevator. So you just saw an action now to show you the actual thing. Ooh, if I can do it. Now this wrestle line, remember, is powered when the piston comes over here, which will then convert the signal, and that is used. Let's come over here to see it better. Right there. That power goes and turns off this redstone torch, so that's why I'm inverting it there, so that we can have all three of these redstone torches. There's one on the three sides of the blocks, and then the redstone line on the other side. And this is basically a torch burnout system. There's a piece of redstone dust in the middle of that, and so when as soon as that line turns off, these torches will be flashing, and if one of them burns out, the other two torches will still continue flashing. And then there's the redstone dust there. And basically that's what makes this line here flash, and powers the dropper there. 
and this actually does butt power the piston, so you gotta be careful not to update the piston while that's flashing. And that is everything. Phew, we got through that. Now there's actually very little left to do. I got all the complicated customization stuff done. There is something I am really afraid of, and that is in the normal iron foundry, the redstone is actually in a tiny little room. This is a lot more redstone and stuff, and it goes out farther. And I am scared that it might actually go into maybe non entity loading chunks or unloaded chunks or something. I don't know how big of a reach the nether portal truck has, so I'm gonna have to do some tests with that before I put down all the door. Basically, I need to fix the resin dust, make the portal, and test the whole thing, make sure it works. If it doesn't, I'll try the hopper truck and use that for trap loading, see if that works or not. And then, I need to put down all the doors, and add the water, and then, that is everything. So, this should be done soon. I just made a big mistake. So, I was under the impression that every time a poppy went through the portal, it loaded the surrounding chunks for 5 minutes. But actually, I was re-watching Tangle's video, double checking a few things, and he said it's every 1 minute. So, we don't want it hooked up to this 2 minute 40 second timer, we want it hooked up to this 40 second timer. And if I didn't just do that, and I placed on all the doors and stuff, as soon as I left, the they would have all merged. Crazy how something as small as that is as bad as that. So now I guess I can tear this, these two rails apart and collect all the redstone. I've been meaning to show you this guy for a while now, but I keep forgetting. This is my snow gong. I used him to create all the snow over there. Um, I learned this trick from Panda where you can put the snow golem in the middle of four fence poles, so he's standing on all four of these snow blocks. So just. And then what happens is you take your shovel, and if you aim it right here, you're aiming at both of these snow layers. So once you break one, before it repairs, you actually have time to break the next one, and you get snowballs double as fast, like this. And then what you normally do is fill up your inventory with snow blocks. And normally I'd have about four shovels, which I'll just sit here and break through. And once that's broken, I just stand here and craft snow blocks by pushing five to select this fifth slot while hovering over the spot on my crafting table where I want to put the stuff. don't really have enough snow balls to do this, but that's what this guy is. Alright, it is time to mine some obsidian. Let's just grab my diamond pickaxe and go. Now, I'm going to be getting the obsidian by mining portals, like so. And I learned a trick from Simply Sark which you can view this video by clicking on the annotation or the link in the video description. Basically, he taught me how to destroy portals without having to jump into the void between every destruction of the portal. And so I will be using that trick. However, the first time I will be jumping into the void because I need, that's the purpose of this chest here. So I can store the obsidian and diamond pickaxe there and stuff after I jump in the void the first time. Because I do need to make another nether portal to kickstart this thing. Alright, and now the original nether portal's gone. And actually this is a bad place to put my chest in. I'm not sure, but it might break when the next portal generates, so I'm going to put it more over here. And just put everything in there. And then... Yep, that's everything. So, goodbye cruel world. Now, technically, I don't think I had to die if I set up a little portal system somewhere else or something. I mean, a dropper system thing that will just drop an item into the portal a little bit later. But hey, look at that! Another portal has now generated. So normally I would just keep doing this and breaking the portal over and over. But with the video that Simply Sark showed me, I don't have to. So I have filled this dropper full of snowballs. And this is the Iron Foundry thing again. And I have found a way to make this kind of a dual purpose thing with also pretty much using the same timer circuit just to throw the items into the nether and generate new portals for me. 
So that is what I'm going to be doing here once I create this portal. Alright, I just light this and it worked. And then all I have to do is start this thing, which will drop an item there. Ooh! Yeah! Drop an item there once every 40 seconds, which is all that I need. Now, all I have to do is destroy one of these blocks. Oh, and if you look over there, you can see that a snowball's already popped through. But now that I've destroyed this block, about a few seconds later, another portal should generate. And in the meantime, I can just finish mining this portal. Oh, there's the next one. See? Perfect. I'll just be doing this for a while and getting lots of obsidian. It is finished. The entire iron, iron foundry is now complete, and the episode is going to be drawing to a close soon. I have had some problems though, if you looked in the montage with ice forming. Uh, I've been putting these temporary torches around here. I saw one here just a second ago, but it looked like it disappeared. So I'm just going to put one here for that. Um, I'll tell you about all the other little problems I ran into and also some other changes I made. So for example, these iron bars were not here before, but now they are. And the reason for that is, well, this, if you remember before, there used to be torches right there and carpet on top, and water would just destroy the torches. I realized that when I watched this section of the video that they were on the same level and I guess that's the whole purpose of these being here in the first place. So now they're iron bars and the tricky part of all that was getting them under the villager right there. Uh, if you look real closely you'll see me fiddling around with a piston and that's me pushing the iron bars under the villagers and pushing the carpet right there. And the carpet is probably not needed but I want them to have a full platform to be on the step one fourth of an iron bar. Ooh, there's another piece of ice. Okay. Now to show you the next thing. And by 
way, here is all the iron golems. It's working great. It's also very noisy. So, also, I found that sometimes, for whatever reason, these pistons will get a one tick pulse, which will leave the blocks out, and then no matter what the iron golems did on the tripwire, they would just stay out. So, I added a repeater here to solve that on a two tick pulse, and so that way it can never get a one tick pulse. I also added this override lever here because I found out that sometimes. I can't get up there. There we go. Sometimes it seems the thing would get stuck open because it seemed like the iron golems were swimming, and so I could just flick that to override this thing to close it so they stop swimming. But I haven't seen that happen since, and that could be pretty dangerous. If that keeps happening, uh, another solution would be to push the water back one so that they really can't swim. And now for this part, I added, I finished this thing, we got tons of iron, I have been doing things since I built this, uh, making the intro for the video, but, so that's why this thing filled up so much, and it is working great, and if I were to push this button, then now this light's on, this will stop filling up, and this will start filling up, right here, just like that. I will show you the wiring for this now. So, at this point I got myself a silk touch pickaxe from one of the villagers with a silk touch trade. And so I can make a simple ice elevator by test. I uh, will show that off in a sec, let me do this thing first. And I could also make see-through blocks, so the item elevator you can actually see in. And I didn't know this, but you can make a plus sign shape instead of a 3x3 three three square. I always thought it had to be a 3x3 three three square. But yeah, here it is, the button's right there, goes to the one tick pulse, which either makes the block go out or stay in due to the one tick pulse, which will light one of the lamps. And then the redstone wiring comes up here and powers this hopper. Now, the way this thing works is the iron will flow in here to this hopper, and then basically this hopper is facing into there, but if the redstone torch is off, then this hopper will get it first, which then leads directly into this mess. But if the redstone torch is on, then, or if that's too full, then it will continue on over here, and then get sucked down there and go into this mess. And then when that gets filled up, it's hard to see, but the hopper chain basically goes back over here and fills it up. So that's how that all works. Uh, the furnace is on top. Not really needed, but I found out also from a zip crowd server tour, I think it was number 10, that uh, furnace on top will save a little bit of lag by just keeping, it won't be checking for entities above the hopper. And so, might as well. Furnaces are cheap. Okay, now let's actually look at this item elevator, and this is really great. I love this thing, and if you, ooh. That won't work. If you ever get the chance, look at Tess's video on how to make this, because it's a really great concept, but basically the items just come up here and somehow some glitch with the flowing thing and stuff, they will just kind of fling up, but it requires ice, so that's why I didn't do this with the other item elevator over there. But now that I have ice, I can just make the iron go here, and go straight up, and over there. And I purposely made it so that the little window thing is visible from over here. I do have a villager in the way. Hopefully I'll move him sometime, but yeah, you can see it over there. And that is all there is to this thing. On another note, the contraption I was making at the beginning, uh, <laughs> yeah, that awesome contraption with the, all that extra grass and stuff, this is what did that. Uh, <laughs> So, yes, I was, that was actually me recording that in normal survival. Um, was that grass actually real and stuff? Well, I will prefer not to answer that. But, check back on my channel for a later video that I'll be putting out soon called Ghost Blocks, and I'll explain that. But, if you look over here, life is teasing me. A pig spawn on this tiny little grass platform, but the whole time that I had a grass platform over there, nothing ever spawned. And plus, pigs are the worst animals there are. But, 
That's pretty cool. I can't really do anything with him. I think I want to put him in the nether sometime. I put him in the minecart so that he doesn't wander off the edge. But, and he actually spawned over there and wandered over here. Yeah, but that's what that is. And I guess while I'm over here, I'll show you the wiring to this thing. Uh, I won't tell you what it is, but yeah, this is the wiring. Um, yeah. Also, one more thing. If you feel like I am coming out with these videos too slowly, well, it's because I am building a lot and very few episodes. I mean, how many people build an iron foundry in episode number two? However, if you really want episodes to come out faster, I'll make a deal with you. If you go and follow me on Twitter, I will put out a video, like an episode 3.1 and 3.2 every once in a while, which will just kind of show segments of what I did. So if I were to do that for this video here, I probably would have separated the witch farm and the slime farm into two different episodes and then the iron foundry and that would be the third episode maybe. And there, there will be differences between the little episodes. It, it won't just be shorter versions of this episode, but I, I might go into more detail on those things. Who knows? I'm sure I'll do little video edits between each of the little mini episodes, but that's the idea there. I think that's it for this episode, so I hope you enjoyed it, and see you next episode.